we were talking about how you can get energy, but also water for irrigation. It's a very fitting topic to move on to Article 3, which is going to be about droughts and farmland. So droughts can be disastrous for farmland. And the way that farmers can soften the blow is by having drought insurance. The reason drought insurance, the traditional model, kind of sucks is because you have to wait until your uh, crops die, and then you have to go to the insurance company and say, hey, these are the crops that died. You have to wait for them to process it. And it's just laborious. It's bureaucratic. You're going to have to wait to get a payout. And farmers depend on that money for you know surviving and setting up crops for the next year, things like that. Okay. So say there's a drought. Mm -hmm. The way that drought insurance works today is instead of me being able to get a payout partway through to let me pay for more water to increase my irrigation and recover the, cop the crop, I have to wait for these crops to dry out and die. Exactly. And then I can in collect my insurance payout without the opportunity to ever recover my crop. Exactly. And this is where okay. the ETH Zurich researchers made this proposal of using satellites to come up with index insurance for farmland. And index insurance, I had no idea what it was, but it's actually kind of interesting. So instead of like, again, going through the laborious process of a human determining whether or not you should get a payout, you have these various indices that have parameters related to drought. So let's take like uh, soil moisture. If the satellite that is monitoring your farmland notices that the soil moisture has dropped below a certain level that's considered drought levels, it will automatically give you a payout. So, there, okay, no so you've got more money to pay for more water if you need to. Or exactly, like exactly. Which is interesting because like not only are you helping the farmers in the worst case scenario, but in a sense, you're actually helping and prevent the worst case scenario. And in yeah, therefore, increasing yields and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You're helping them. And in turn, you're helping yourself as an insurance company from not having to do these massive payouts. Okay. Yeah. Does it require active monitoring with these satellites? So these satellites are checking on this farmland or hovering over there, checking on the farmland on a regular basis, mm -hmm. or is it more of like a one-off check and then you just use the soil gauge monitor or something like that to detect the moisture in the soil? Yeah, so that's my understanding of it. It's actually like real-time monitoring of all these okay. various things. They talked about um, soil moisture, evaporation from plants, land surface evaporation, again, all the indices that have to do with uh, drought. And I imagine all this technology already exists on satellites to be able to measure these things right now. Yeah. And it's funny when I was reading it, I was like, this kind of seems far fetched. Like this is a proposal that's kind of out there, but it turns out that they're already deploying this kind of insurance model in certain European countries. I think the example they used was Spain and France. Um, they're using this index model for their grassland and pasture lands. And it's funny because those apparently were uninsurable with the traditional model because it was just so, so expensive. But again, mm -hmm. with this new model where you can just actively monitor these various parameters and then be able to get feedback of, hey, you should probably do more irrigation. And you know what? We'll give you money for the additional cost. That's been making up for it. Yeah, well, this and it makes me feel excited. And I actually um, have an investor who's working on something similar. Their company oh, is cool. called okay. Green Triangle. It's a, it's a different approach, but it also leverages satellite data to help with insuring crops. So what they do is they use satellites to help appraise the value of an entire field so that you can have an accurate appraisal, okay. you know, of the value of what my entire, you know, five tracks of corn over there, whatever, you know, my entire crop is worth so that you can go to an insurance company with the right value. So um, it's interesting to see I think we've both been surprised with how high tech the agriculture industry is. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had such a backwards mentality of like what farms are and how their operation works. I thought it's just all about tractors from like 60 years ago, but it is so high tech. And I mean, it makes sense. You're feeding an ever growing population. Your supply chains need to be as sustainable as possible. So it makes sense that they're so reliant on technology. And I really like the approach this team is taking from ETH Zurich in that they're not waiting for the worst case scenario to happen. They're allowing for something like index insurance to be applied here um, and using satellites that makes it a scalable model so that farmers don't have to wait for the crop to die out to receive the payout. It actually increases the yield and increases the efficiency and actually reduces the economic burden on both the farmer and the insurance mm -hmm. company. It's, it seems like this aligns all the incentives in the right way and feels like a win to me. That, that was exactly the takeaway I had. Yeah. 